Go ahead and make some noise for the Lord. Come on. Give him your highest praise. Give the Lord your shout of praise in the building. Praise, praise the Lord. Let me get some monitors. You guys got some monitor? Praise God. I really feel God's presence here. About the second song, I was ready to take my shoes off. He says, if you gather in my name, I promise to show up. Where people, where belief is, God's spirit is there. And I feel a lot of faith, a lot of belief in this room. Very powerful. When we're done tonight, you're going to approach problems a lot differently. The way that you solve problems today is not how you're going to solve them when you leave here tonight. See, the Holy Spirit is a giver of gifts. And the gifts that he gives us, they come from God. And when we begin to operate in these gifts, it changes everything that we do. The way that we solve problems, the way that we look at circumstances, the way that we bring resolution is through these gifts. And tonight, the Holy Spirit is going to have us operate in the gift of faith. It's a very powerful gift. Some of you tonight, you're going to lay hands on people and they're going to get healed. Miracles are going to be, be done through your hands tonight. It's going to be a powerful night tonight. If you've never operated in this gift, get ready tonight. You're going to operate and move in this gift. I want everyone to participate in what the Holy Spirit wants to do tonight. And in order for that to happen, everyone in this room must be a believer. Number one. Because the gifts are for the church, for the believers. And so if you're, if you're not saved, if you're not a believer, a follower of Christ, then the, you'll, you'll feel nothing. You'll get nothing. So what we're going to do tonight, we're going to make sure that everyone in this room, we're going to repent. We're going to turn to the living God. We're going to be saved before we do anything. Let's do that. So... Well, we're gonna, let's do this. If right now in this room, if you know you're not right with God and, and you wanna give your life to Christ and you surrender your will over to his and you're ready to repent and turn from your sin and turn to the living God, I just want you in your seat just to raise your hand. You don't have to come forward, just raise your hand. Praise the Lord, thank you, sir. All over the back, thank you. Thank you, thank you. This is great. Yeah, this must happen. This is going to set the, the stage for everything else we do tonight. Raise your, keep your hands up with me. I'm getting saved with you. Raise your hand. Praise the Lord. And so let's do this. Let's corporately say a prayer of salvation, and then we're going to move on to the next thing. Can we do that? Pray with me. If your hands up, keep your hands up. Say, Jesus, I surrender to you. I surrender my ways and my will over to you. Save me, forgive me, heal me, and help me to serve you from this day forward. I receive forgiveness, mercy, and grace for my life. And I declare, you set me free this night in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Give God a shout of praise. Raise your hand if you said that prayer. Let me see. Raise your hand if you said that prayer. Man, powerful. Very powerful. Now you're ready. The next thing that we're going to do, we're just following the pat we're just following a pattern, a biblical pattern. Next thing we're going to do, well, you should sign up for Holy Warriors, shouldn't you? You can do that too. That's on the app, Get Disciple. But one of the things we need is, is we need the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And we're going to talk a little bit about what that is. Altar team, you guys can sit down. I'm sorry.
We're going to talk a little bit about what that is and what that looks like. And, and in order to do that, we got, of course, we got to look to the scriptures. And in Matthew chapter 11 or chapter 3, in verse 11, John the Baptist said this. He said, I baptize you with water or those who repent of their sins and turn to God. But someone, and we know who that someone is, is Jesus. Jesus is coming soon, who's greater than I am, so much greater I'm not worthy to even be his slave and carry his sandals. He, Jesus, will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. And so you see here two baptisms, one with water and one with fire. And men can baptize people in water to repentance, but only Jesus can baptize you with his Holy Spirit and with fire. He's a baptizer. And so no no man or woman needs to touch you. The Holy Spirit will touch you, and Jesus will baptize you in the Holy Spirit and with this fire. If you've never been baptized in the spirit like this and you've never spoke in tongues, I want you just to raise your hand right now. Just raise your hand. You've never, never done this. All right. We, the, I knew there's going to be at least 50 people in this room who have never done it. Praise the Lord. If you don't know what I'm talking about, then you've probably never done it. <laughs> you, can, you can put your hands down. But I need, to, I need to explain. You guys want to sit down? Are you getting, your legs getting tired? I'm telling you, it's a different service. We must remember in the, in the, in the, in the scriptures, the writers had to come up with words so that the people could understand the religion. The religion was new. It was a new covenant. It had never been done before. And so the writers here are trying to depict understanding to the believers on what, the, what these new things mean. And so he uses this word baptism. Ba in, this, in this culture, when you said baptism, everyone knew what it meant. Just like if I was to say the word football in this audience, everyone knows football. So here they're trying to use words that the people of that time can understand. And so he chooses the word baptize. And this word baptize, what it meant was to be fully immersed, fully engulfed or fully immersed. And the word actually came from uh, a term that they used to dye clothes or to dye linen. In, those in that time, they would take a pot just like this, probably a lot bigger, but similar to this. And they would take this pot and fill it with water. And inside the pot, they would put the color of dye that they wanted uh, 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 the articles to be saturated in. And so what they did is they filled the pot with water, they, they put the dye, and then they, they lit it on fire. And the water began to boil and get hot, and that told them that, that, the, that, the, that the water was ready it had to have fire in order for this process to take place. And so they had the cistern, they had the pot, they had the water, and they had the fire. And when, when the writer said that you must be baptized, everyone understood. Everyone understood because that's how people, uh, they dyed their linen. And when you, when when they t when the writer says that Jesus is going to baptize you 
we're in the Holy Spirit and with fire, they, they had an aha moment. I understand that. And what they were saying is that whoever gets immersed in there is going to change. They're going to change color. They're going to transform. They're going to become something different by the, when they come out. And it wouldn't matter what color of human being went in. This is what makes us the same. Because you can be a Mexican and get baptized. You can be a white man and get baptized. You can be a black man and get baptized. You can be drug addicted and get baptized in the Holy Spirit. You can be full of sin and get baptized in the Holy Spirit. But everyone who goes in, they all come out the same. They all get changed. They all get transformed. They all get delivered. Every single one of them. It doesn't matter what the circumstance is. It doesn't matter the challenges that you're facing. Whoever gets baptized in the Holy Ghost, they will change. In Acts chapter 1 verse 5, Jesus told his disciples, he said this, John baptized you with water, but in a few days you'll be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So Jesus is reminding them the time is getting closer. Three years have gone by and they hadn't been baptized. But Jesus is telling them, not many days from now, you're going to be baptized. And so you can be a believer and not baptized in the Holy Spirit. You can be a Christian and never experience the baptism of the Holy Spirit. In the book of Acts, we see uh, Paul the Apostle running into people who, who were believers but had never been baptized in the Holy Spirit. And so Jesus is introducing this to his disciples and telling them, listen, don't do anything until you get this. Don't try and do any ministry. Don't try and to preach anywhere. Don't try to save anybody. Don't try to do nothing until you get this. Stay in Jerusalem until you get baptized. And in Acts chapter 2, when the Holy Spirit shows up in verse 1, we say, it says this. On the day of Pentecost, all the believers. Someone say all the believers. We got a room full of believers now. Everyone's born again, right? We got a room full of believers. All the believers were meeting together in one place. And suddenly there was a sound from heaven like the roaring of a mighty rushing windstorm. And it filled the house where they were sitting. And then what looked like flames or tongues of fire appeared and settled on each of them. And everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other tongues as the Holy Spirit gave them this ability. And what we need to notice is that everyone in that room was baptized. All of the disciples spoke in tongues mother mary spoke in tongues jesus brother spoke in tongues anyone who was in that room got baptized and spoke in tongues notice also that there was nothing quiet about it there was nothing quiet about about what took place it was loud it was boisterous. It shook. It was a mighty wind. It was tongues of fire. There was nothing quiet about it. When God gives us, when God baptizes us, it's often it's often very emotional. It's a very powerful experience. Have you ever experienced this? Raise your hand. Praise the Lord. I'm going to need you in a minute. 
And what we're going to do tonight is if you've never been baptized in the Holy Spirit, I want you to just raise your hands. Raise your hand right now. If you've never spoken tongues before, okay, do me a favor. You got your hand up. Come on up here with me to the front. If you want to be baptized in this and with the Holy Spirit, tonight's your night. You come forward. Give them a hand as they come forward. Hey, hallelujah. Uh, let's go down a little bit. We can cut the music for now. Thank you, guys. You said you can't hear me. <laughs> Everyone else, come on, give me hands. They come. Look at that. Wow. Powerful. We got some more room here on the sides. This is going to be awesome. Now here we see in the scriptures, number one, Jesus is the one who's going to baptize you. And the Bible tells us that whoever asks for the spirit will get it. I've never met one person who, who asked God to baptize them who didn't get baptized. So you're all going to receive it here tonight. Okay? Who's the baptizer? Jesus. So we have to ask Jesus for this baptism, right? We got more people coming. I would assume that everyone else prays in the spirit, right? Notice in the scriptures that when the Spirit came, it came at different intervals. It wasn't in one moment. So it's going to hit in intervals. It may start, it's just going to go everywhere. So if somebody may get it sooner than you, don't be discouraged. You're next. Okay? And what we're going to do is we're going to help our, our, our audience here is going to help us because we need to hear it too. Okay? So you guys go ahead and stand up. You're going to help me. And first we're going to do is we're going to just ask for Jesus to baptize us with the Holy Spirit, with the evidence of speaking in other languages. All right? And then at that moment, our audience here is going to pray in the spirit, and you're going to hear it. And when you hear it, you'll hear it from the back, but then it's going to, it's going to infringe in your space. Someone next to you is going to start praying that way. All right? And when that happens, you know, just know that the spirit of the Lord is very near to you. And you, you, have to, you have to open your mouth and you have to let it out. Just like when you first started praying in English. How many prayed really good in English when you first started praying? I, we're all I was a terrible, I didn't know how to pray nothing. I think I used cuss words when I first started praying. <laughs> but after a while, I started praying real good. Like, hey, my prayers are sounding good. It's the same thing with tongues, right? It may, it, may not, it may feel unnatural at first, but you just got to let it come out, okay? All right, you ready? All right, let's, let's, bow, let's just close our eyes and just focus on Jesus. Just focus on Jesus. Focus on Jesus. Let your mind just shut down because it can't come from your mind. 
It's got to come from your spirit. It's spirit to spirit. Focus on Jesus. And let's talk to him. He's here. Say, Jesus, I ask you to baptize me with the Holy Spirit and with fire. With the evidence of speaking in tongues. I ask you to baptize me now in the name of Jesus. Now lift your hands up. Oh, I feel the Lord right here. Some of you already got it. Go ahead and do it if you already got it. Some of you already got it up here. Go ahead. Some of you were like, we're unsure that you, you weren't sure what it was. You, you, you already had it. Just begin to operate in right now. Come on, there's about four women who already have it. Go ahead. Now, in the, in the back, they need to hear it, so I need you to go real loud. Real loud. Pentecostal loud. There you go. Yeah, yeah, he's got it. You got it, you got it, you got it, you got it, you got it. You got it, let it come out. There you go. Just worship God with it. Just it's used it's for worshiping God. Go in my mind. Praise you, Lord. Come on, let it come out. Like a rushing wind. Like fire, come on, let it come out. In my mind. Thank you, Jesus. Glorify God. Come on, church. Come on, church. In my All right, let's go ahead and stop. Let's go ahead and stop. Thank you, Jesus. Let's go ahead and stop. Now look, here's what you need to know. You could turn it off and you could turn it on. Just like you pray in English, you can pray in the spirit. You choose when you want to pray in English, right? Just you turn it on, you turn it off. Same thing with this baptism. You turn it on, you turn it off. Imagine two valves, a cold water valve and a hot water. English is your cold water valve. Tongues is your hot water valve. When you need to turn up the fire, start praying in the Holy Ghost. Amen? So you can go back and forth, English to spirit, English to spirit. Am I making sense? We're going to do it again right now. How many of you up here right now uh, started praying in tongues? I just want to see your hands. So you came up, you started doing it already. Raise your hand high so we can see. That's like a third of you. So if you, if you already did it, go ahead, and, go ahead and work your way back to your seat. If you haven't done it, stay up here. Come on up closer. All right, you ready? Some of you are too smart. You think too much. Just, it doesn't come from here. It comes from here. Your mind can't comprehend the things of the Spirit. It's got to come from here. You need, you're going to need this when we go into the next, the next teachings about faith. You're going to need If you can do this, this next gift could be no problem for you. Okay, you ready? Now, you already got it. You just got to activate. You just got to do it. Is there any altar workers right here now? Okay, now you come up and lay hands on them. Help them. Help them through it. Let them hear it. Ready? One, 
Raise your hands to the Lord. Baptize me, Lord. The Holy Spirit and fire. Two, three. Go ahead. There you go. Come on. Come on. There you go. There you go. Let it out. There you go. You got it. There you go, sir. Let it go. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. You got it. You got it, sir. There you go. Good job. Good job. Good job. Good job. You got it right there. You got it. You got it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let's give Jesus a shout of praise. And we're going to try and work our way back to our seat. I don't know. Now listen, if you, if you want to stand here, you can. It's no, not a problem. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Let him do it. Keep going. Here. Thank you, Lord. God's washing you. He's washing you, sir. Let him do it. He's washing you. Oh, man. You're getting dipped. You're getting immersed. He's transforming you right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. There's a transformation going place. Thank you, Lord. Let it come out. Let it come out boldly. Come on. Come on, let it come out boldly. Let it come out like a lion. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Now we're going to talk about the gift of faith. And the gift of faith is the first gift of power. Every other gift of power operates through this gift of faith. Including healings and miracles. If you get this gift of faith and you begin to operate it, healings and miracles will follow. The gift of faith can only be given by the Holy Spirit. The word gift is a Greek word called charisma. Anyone who had charis or charisma in the Bible, they were, they were very prestigious and revered people because there are peop- they, they describe people who have been touched by God. And so anyone who had these supernatural gifts, they were, they were well respected because they knew that the person who had the gifts was unique and different from anyone else. And so they knew that that person can only do that if they had been touched by God. When you operate in this gift, it'll cause you to defy all human logic. When you operate in faith, nobody will be able to explain it. It defies all reasoning, so your mind can't comprehend it. Am I making sense? When the Holy Spirit's faith works through you, it'll transcend the human realm of limitations and unbelief. And it'll pull you into the realm of divine certainty. In fact, you become so certain that God can do it that you start to behave as though he already has. This gift of faith will cause you to speak things that do not exist and really believe for them to come into existence. 
For instance, a son or a daughter who's not, who's not born again, who's not saved, who's lost in the streets, you begin to call their salvation forth and actually believe and see them getting saved. Someone who's sick, you can believe for the miracle even before they receive the miracle. When I, when, I, when I got saved, I don't, I don't know about you, but I was broke. Are there any broke Christians in the room? That was me. I went from dealing drugs and working at tattoo shops to now I'm born again trying to work at a car wash. I don't know why you're clapping over that, but Okay. There was no fun in that. I was broke. And when I used to walk to the car wash, God used to, God used to activate these gifts in me even though I didn't even know I was doing them. I didn't know what they meant. The Holy Spirit was teaching me these things. And I used to walk by the tattoo shop that I actually worked at. And across from that tattoo shop was a porn shop. And we used to go uh, into the porn shop and, and get pictures and tattoo them on men. And I would have to walk by that place every single day to get to the car wash. And one day the Holy Spirit began to speak to me. And he told me uh, to curse that porn shop. Speak to the porn shop. That place was like abomination to the city. It had no value. And, and, and God was saying, speak to it. And so I began to curse that porn shop. The next day I went by for work, that porn shop had burned down. There, it is now today, it's a fire station go down Mission Boulevard in Westside Rubido and you'll see it there. And I said, thank you, Jesus. That's faith. There were times when I was walking, I, I had uh, no money. I didn't know what I was going to eat. And I'll just believe that God was going to provide for me. Do you know how many times I found money in the bushes? That was even one time I was walking and the wind blew by some money. God was telling me, I'm your provider now, son. That tattoo shop ain't your provider, nor is that car wash your provider. You can believe in me and I'm going to give you everything that you need. You don't worry about it. I got your back. You just keep working. You just keep trying. You keep do doing the right thing, and I'm going to take care of you. Thank you, Jesus. This has all been a walk of faith. This has all been a walk of faith. There's no reason why I, I, I could be in the place that I am today except through faith in, in Jesus Christ. We had a little dog at home. You know the little dogs, where they call them? Shih tzus. You know the little furry ones? That dog. That dog, he almost died on us. He was so cute. One day he woke up and he was just laid out. He was not eating nothing. He just laid out. And we looked at the dogs and I looked at the kids. Up. That dog's going to die. Take him to the vet. We don't have money for the vet. We have no money for no vet. I didn't have money to even go to the doctor. That dog ain't going to a vet. That dog's probably going to die. And what we do, we surround that dog and we pray for that dog. Kaiser didn't, Kaiser didn't help that. No vet helped that dog. God helped that dog. That dog didn't eat for two weeks and then God healed him. He was up and he was gone. 
And God, God showed me like, I will, I will, I will use you if you allow me. And God will use anybody who believes. But the question is, do you believe? In Mark chapter 11, what time is it? We'll move quick. In Mark chapter 11, Jesus said to his disciples, he said this. He said, have faith in God. A better Greek translation would read like this. Have God's faith. Or have the faith of God or have the kind of faith that comes from God. This is no ordinary faith. This is God's faith. This is not human. It's supernatural, wonder-working faith that comes from God and is given through the Holy Spirit. Whenever Jesus spoke, he spoke by faith. Everything that he said and everything that he did was through God's faith that came from the Holy Spirit. When Jesus healed the sick, he did it with God's faith. When Jesus called, uh, uh, spoke to the dead to come to life, he did it through God's faith. When he opened the eyes of the blind, he did it through God's faith. When leprosy fell off the bodies of men, he did it through God's faith. When paralyzed people began to walk, he did it through God's faith. People with withered hands, he would speak and they would become unwithered. And when he cast out demons, he did it through what? God's faith. This is required if we're going to do the works of Jesus. We have to have this faith. In Mark chapter 11, verse 23, it says this. For truly I say to you, whoever says this mountain be removed and be thrown in the sea and does not doubt in his heart but believes that what he says will come to pass, he will have whatever he says. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask in my name when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. For truly I say to you, if you have the faith as a grain of a mustard seed, you can move mountains and nothing will be impossible for you. It's just a mustard seed of God's faith that can move mountains, change conditions, heal the sick, raise the dead, save souls. It's God's faith that does it. And it's, it's simply releasing the, his words from your mouth. Because those are not your words, those are God's words. And if God's faith is attached to those words. It's as if God himself is saying it. And he says you only need a mustard seed. It's, it's not the, the quantity, it's the, it's the quality. It is the most pure, most powerful form of faith that there is. It's a faith, it's a gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And Jesus, when he when he would heal people, he often, he would always he would often ask him, "Do you believe that I could heal you?" And sometimes, according to your faith, so be it. Jesus is always looking for someone to believe. He's looking for someone to believe. If you can believe him and you could, you could uh, uh, unite your belief with his, then it's going to get done. Things are going to change. He's looking for someone with this type of faith. Someone who's going to believe him at his word. When Martha's brother died, Lazarus, what did he tell Martha? He said, Martha, do you believe that I can raise your brother to life? She said, I believe one day you will. She said, no, Martha. 
I am the resurrection and the life. And even though he's dead, I'm telling you that he's going to live again. And then he asked her, do you believe this? And she said, what? Yes, Lord, I believe. And that's what he's looking for. Somebody to say, yes, Lord, I believe. Yes, Lord, I believe that you can do it. I believe that you can save me. I believe that you can change my circumstances. I believe that you can break the fear, the anxiety, the depression, the loneliness, the heartache. I believe, God, that you can save my children. I believe, God, that you can cause me to be prosperous. I believe. He's looking for someone to simply trust him at what he says. Take him at his word. And it begin to operate in your life. The Holy Spirit, this type of faith, is what's going to change everything. Amen? How many people in here are, are hurting in their body? Physical, like arthritis joints come here in the middle there's a big spot here in the middle let him in the middle right here you suffer from arthritis joint we're at all over your body you too Wow, a lot of folks. Come on up, Pastor Mike. A lot of folks. Come on here in the middle. Let's try and get everybody in the middle for you. How many got joint pain in your back? In your knees? Wrists and elbows. Okay. Now, that's a lot of people. That's half the church be hurting in here, Mike. No wonder they don't want to stand up with me. Do you believe that God can heal you? Do you believe he can heal you right now? Is there anyone out here who believes that God can heal them right now? Who has the faith to see them heal right now? Are you ready? Raise your hands right now. We're going to go. Just begin to pray in the spirit out here. Come on, we want... Pray in your most holy faith. He says, pray in your most holy faith. Pray in the Holy Spirit. Jesus, we pray that you would touch and heal all the joints and the marrow. That you would search deep, Father, and heal in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for healing power, Lord, your virtue to touch every woman, every man, God, who's being afflicted in their joints. In the name of Jesus, we speak healing right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Healing, God. In the name of Jesus. There it goes, sweetie. There it goes. All through your body. There you go. All through your body. Let him touch it all. There you go. Even in the neck. Yes, Lord. Remove that. Thank you, Lord. Complete healing in Jesus' name. Complete healing. No more pain. No more pain. What part of your body hurts? Your knee. Uh, for the... Good. Your hands. 
how they feel. That God just keep touching. Amen. Keep touching. That God's gonna touch. People are getting healed right now, just right here on the spot. Hallelujah. Now begin to, if you feel like, okay, I got it, begin to move around that, that part of your body. <laughs> You're wondering where to go, huh? Where to go? You're like trying to hurt yourself. It's, it, it's gone, man. <laughs> Who feels like they got healed? Tell me. What was going on before? My shoulder was always hurting me. I really couldn't lift it up. Now I'm lifting it up. I'm praising the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Complete healing, Father. There it goes. Complete healing, Father. In the name of Jesus. All the muscles, all the tendons healed. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for your healing power, God. Hallelujah. Anyone over there? Who else got healed over here? Somebody got healed? Anybody got healed? Wave at me if you got healed. Wave at me if you got healed right here. Wave at me. Who's got healed? Right here? Come on, brother. Come over here. Tell us about it. What was going on? My knee was in pain. Uh, I got healed. It feels a lot better now. You think you could jump on that knee now? Yeah. Let's see it. Jump right there, brother. We can see you. Look at that guy. Come on now. Praise God. Who, who got healed over here? Come here. Tell me what was going on with you. Um, I have a lot of pain in my right shoulder. Well, I had. I just claim God's healing right now in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Holy Spirit, thank you for your healing power. I believe and I claim it in Jesus' name. And I feel you throughout my heart and my mind. And I thank you, Lord, for everything you're doing and everything you will do. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. We begin to move it. Let's see. Amen. There you go. Praise God. Somebody else Somebody else got healed here? Who, who's got their back healed? Lord, is it someone's back got healed? Who is it? Over here. Come on up here. Come on. Go around here. Make your way up here. Thank you, Lord. Let's give Jesus praise and glory. That's powerful. Oh, my gosh. She's even climbing on the stage. What was up with your back? I've been having a lot of low back pain. Um, my ex-husband used to push me against stairs and all kinds of different things. Um, arthritis all through my body as well, too. So uh, my back feels good. I don't feel... My wrist or my knee. Come on, move around for us. Feels good. You good? Let's see, walk back and forth there. Come on. Powerful. Praise the Lord. Awesome. Praise God. All right. Listen, this gift is for us not for just for to utilize for your own self but to help others one thing that the world needs to see they need to see God made manifest or God revealed and God is, is, is not embarrassed or ashamed to prove his power and so as believers, we have to become bold enough to pray for people who are in desperate situations and watch the power of God hit them. There are some people, if they don't see the miracle, if they don't get healed, if they don't get delivered, they're not going to believe. And God, God will use you to prove that he's alive and well, that he can do it. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's the same God. And the same spirit that was in Christ now lives in us. Amen? So can we commit to using these gifts for God's kingdom? Praise the Lord. 
I just want to raise your hand if you got healed right now. I want to see all the people that got healed. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Pastor Christian. Come on, can we give God praise right now for... Look, these nights, I know this whole series, this whole series has been just different and unique and God has been moving in such unique ways. And God's gonna continue to do that. And I want you to remember this. Just as Pastor Gavin said early in the series, every night, every service is like a different piece of the puzzle. Don't miss what God can do with the next service and the next service. This Sunday, Prophet Rob is gonna be here and he moves in the prophetic and he may have a word for you, but I believe he is gonna have a word for you. How many believe there's gonna be a word for me? God has a word for me. So come ready to receive this Sunday. Invite somebody to the house of God this Sunday and God's gonna move. Can we give Pastor Joe a round of applause? Just being obedient and moving in the spirit. We love you church, I'm gonna pray over you. Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, God, for every everything you've done tonight. We thank you for the blessing, God. We thank you for the healings. We thank you for the baptisms in the spirit. All that you did tonight, I pray a blessing, Father, over those that came tonight. I pray that you would keep them, you would watch over them, you would protect them and their families. In Jesus' name we pray and we all say amen. God bless you, church. We love you. If you need prayer, come forward. We'd love to pray with you. For those that gave your life to the Lord tonight, please scan this code behind me. If you gave your life to Jesus, scan this code. God bless you. Have a wonderful night. Remember, God is for you. There's no one who can come against you. God